Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are connecting from. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you be notified each time we upload a video. I thank you so much for coming around. If you are coming from Africa, Asia, Europe, America, Australia, wherever you are hanging on to, thank you so much for being there for me at all time. I appreciate you and I praise you for your comments. I read your comments from time to time and I appreciate your comments and your contribution. Please always try to give a like and give your comments after watching. Thank you so much and remember this. Today, once again, I'm here to bring you information on things that are going around in the contraption called Nigeria, focusing mainly now on the southeastern part of Nigeria, mainly the Igbos. When we talk about the problem that that Igbo people, or mainly the Biafrans, are facing in the hand of the contraption called Nigeria, people think it's a, good, a, a joke. When we talk about the sheer hatred that the Fulanese have against the Igbos, people think it's a joke. You saw the statement of Amadou Bello, the video of Amadou Bello that I have played, time without number. If you want me to play it, I can play it again for you to see. Sure. Talks about killing your premier. Add on top of that the North's general hate of the East. And you can start to get the picture of the sort of tribal tension Nigeria was heading towards. One thing I've noticed, premier, while I've been here, is that Northerners seem to have, I might almost call it, obsession about the Igbos. Could you perhaps explain that to me? Well, the Igbos are more or less the type of people whose desire is mainly to dominate everybody. If they go to a village, to a town, they want to monopolize everything in that area. If you put them in a labor camp as a laborer, within a year they will try to emerge as headman of that camp and so on. Well, in, in the past, our people were not alive to their responsibilities because you can see from our northernization policy that in 1952, when I came here, there weren't 10 northerners in our civil service here. Then I tried to have it northernized, and now all, all important posts are being held by northerners. Is this policy of filling all key posts in the north solely with northerners and not with other Nigerians, a temporary or permanent one? In actual fact, what it is, is a northerner first. If you can't get a northerner, then we take an expatriate like yourself on contract. If we can't, then we can employ another Nigerian, but on contract too. This is going to be permanent, I should say, for the, as far as I can foresee, because it will be rather dangerous to see the number of boys we are now turning from our, all our learning institutions coming out with having no, no work to do. I'm sure whichever government of the day might be, it will uh, feel rather embarrassed and it might even lead to bloodshed. Doesn't this damage the idea, sir, of uh, all people in all regions in, in Nigeria being fellow citizens of one country? Well, it might, but uh, um, you are, I mean, new to our region, but how many northerners are employed in the east or in the west? The answer is no. And if there are, there may be 10 laborers employed only in after listening to that video, this is a hatred that has been coming all a long way. This hatred is still there. They hate this Biafran so much that they don't want to be with this world. But I don't know why they are insisting that we should be in the same control with them. I don't know. These people hate the Southerners so much. The, the, the Fulanese, the Fulanese hate, they hate the Southerners so much that they don't want to have anything to do with the Southerners, more especially the Igbos. They don't want us to survive. They don't want us to see the light of the day. But yet, when you talk about breaking it up, that people will go their separate ways, practice what they want to practice, stay on their own and grow at their own speed, they wouldn't agree. They wouldn't agree. When you hate someone so much, the next thing you have to do is to step away from that person, be on your own, so that you can have your peace. Because the more you continue to exist with that person, you will not have a peace. You wouldn't have peace. Even though when the person is not fighting you, you'll be fighting yourself. That is exactly what is happening between the Fulanese and the southern part of Nigeria. Even when the southern part of Nigeria are trying as much as they can to make sure that peace exists, the Fulanese are busy planning way to destroy the southern part of Nigeria, way to occupy land, way to dominate them, way to make the land ungovernable. That is why if you see somebody from the southern part of Nigeria, who is he talking about Nigeria, he doesn't know what he or she is saying. 
this very thing they are talking about is what our founding fathers have talked about. It never worked. Zeke tried, Dr. Nandeski, we tried everything possible to please the North. Even up to the extent of leaving his brother Awolu to go and march with the North, who he has nothing in common with. In order to please them and make them happy, yet they are not happy. Zeke delayed the independent because of the North to come up and join, yet they are not happy. The same thing with Awolu. Awolu will also try to join the North to please them, yet the North are not happy. Today they are against the southern part of they are against the Ududuas. How can you please these people? Do you think you can make a change? The change that people have been trying to make for several years ago, for more than 100 years, people are trying to make that change. You, couldn't, you think you are the one that's going to make it? It is not possible. The only way to go is a breakup. It's only breakup. After the breakup, there will be peace in every way. Every region will focus on their own side and deal with the problem that they have. That is the only simple solution. It is not that of hate. It is out of love that... To save life, in order to save life in that contraption called Nigeria, there has to be a breakup, a peaceful breakup. We can still do business, we can sell in Tamari, we can do so many things together if we so wish in time to come. But for now, breaking it up is the easiest and the best way for us to save life in that contraption called Nigeria. In order to express more about the hate that is in that very contraption that people are overlooking, it is not a joke. When you see Mazen Nandekano comes online to talk with anger, and speak with anger against the Fulani hegemony, the Fulani agenda, what they are planning against the southern part of Nigeria, more especially the Igbos. When you see Mazen Nandekan crying about this issue, it is not a joke. It's not a child's play. I want to share with you a video. This is a voice message. It is a voice message of the voice of a honorable man in the north. Somebody they call honorable. His name is... Uh, What's that his name? His name is uh is uh is the says Honorable Tafida Mafindi. Honorable Tafida Mafindi. Because a lady from the southeast was inviting him for a book launch. That was only crime she committed. She was inviting him for a book launch. Then hear the kind of insult, abuse, and hate speech that she, he he vomited on this lady. Hear the kind of causes that he rendered to Igbo people for no just cause, for nothing. Listen to the voice message, then we can come back. We, we are not ready to work with anybody evil. Anytime now we are going to start retaliating on you. Don't think you have a right to, to kill our brothers to, the, to any level that you still participate in Nigeria. In the fuck, fuck hell with your logbook lodge. You hear? I think you got it. Tell him. Let him go and lodge in, in Imbakwe's grave. Yeah. You understand? Um, I don't understand what you're saying, sir, but... Um, I am is... equally don't understand what you're saying. You are calling for my intellectual. Are you an idiot tribe, idiot group, idiot state, people who don't have value for themselves? Go and manage yourself in your emo. Kill the police station, break the prisons. Let's see when the North start retaliating. Why are you going to start? And it's not going to be long. Idiot. Don't think you are, you, have, you have a right to be Nigeria when you are when you are you, you are massacring Nigeria. Um, sir, you know that we respect you. Shut up, there, my friend. This... Shut up, idiot. <laughs> oh, idiot. Ingrid. All the houses you have in Abuja, you leave them. That you leave the houses in Patakon. Shut up. Close the wire there. Close the phone there. I'm not participating in anything, Imo. I have so many friends in Imo. Frank Bezim. Dr. Okoku, Dr. this, Dr. that. The book launch is actually in Abuja. Who, who are you writing to book launch in Abuja? My friend, fuck up. Go and launch the book in Imo. Don't, don't you have a place in Imo? Go and write, go and launch for, 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 your, for your Biafra Ibo, Ibo, Ibo agenda. Go there. Invite anybody who wants to go to Imo and launch. Why do people run to Abuja? Go back to your state. 
you ingrate Igbo, Igbo, Igbo idiots. You think you have monopoly of violence? Book launch. What are you writing? Start writing today. What you write before is where a story. Just wait. The dead north is going to turn on, on you any moment from now. You will know you know you are Egypt, you are you are you are Arab. Don't call me for any book launch. I don't pass that level. Thank you for your concern, sir. Thank I'm you not for, your, for your good wishes. We have great I've Thank never wished good. If you are from the southeastern part of Nigeria, more especially the Igbos, and you are still talking of non-Nigeria, you are still talking of about one Nigeria, you don't know what you are saying, you don't know what you are doing. You are only digging your grave. If you are from the southern part of Nigeria, more especially the Igbos, and you are still talking about one Nigeria, you are only digging your grave. This will do not mean well for you. You see the kind of anger, you see the kind of anger in the heart of that man. This is an unhonorable man in the House of Assembly. It is this man that we are expecting to go and change the constitution for you, a constitution that will favor you. This kind of man is the, this kind of voice you are hearing. They call him Honorable Tafida Mafindi. Share this video to people. Share it to your friends to hear. Share it to every Satanist to hear. Share this video to every Satanist to see. Honorable Tafida Mafindi. This is what he is saying. This kind of person, these are the people that will go to the House of Assembly or House of Senate to change the law for you that will favor you from the South. You must be joking. You are digging your grave. Asking for one Nigeria is a death, a death wish for everybody from the South, Southern part of Nigeria. Asking for one Nigeria is a death wish, more especially for people who have Igbos in that contraption called Nigeria. You don't know what you're doing. Those of you who don't know what you're doing, these people do not like you. They don't want you anywhere around them. They don't want the South, the Oduduas and the Biafrans anywhere around them. Let them allow us to go peacefully. Peaceful resol resolution. Everybody go their separate ways. Then grow at their own speed. Practice whatever religion you want to practice, anything you want. You want to practice your Sharia, nobody will stop you. I can still visit your country, even in your Sharia state. I can still visit there. Knowing fully well that it's a Sharia state, I will obey all your laws, do my business, and get back. After all, people today are going to Saudi Arabia, they go to Iran, they go to Iraq, do businesses. Christians go to businesses, Igbos do businesses over there, and come back peacefully without any trouble. So, the North can equally build that kind of a caliphate. In the North, they can build it within themselves. Have their peace. People will visit on tourism and go back. Come there for business and go back. That is what we are asking for. This issue of staying together cannot work. The hatred is so much. The hatred is unimaginable. There is no way in this planet Earth that southern part of Nigeria and the North can continue to be together and you expect peace in Nigeria. It doesn't happen. It can never and if you think anybody will change the constitution to favor the southern part of Nigeria, it is impossible. The voice message you just had now is a honorable member. Honorable member, honorable Tafida Mafindi. Go and check him out. Honorable member. How do you think we can continue in this way? How do you think we can continue to risk our life in this manner? The only best solution is a breakup. It doesn't end there. I'm going to share with you another senator, what another senator has to say, on a national television. See the kind of anger and rage he's speaking out against the southern part of Nigeria, more especially the southeast. That the agitations and some of the situation of the country are linked to the issue of the constitution. No, I think all this banditry, the agitations and killings and kidnappings are all prelude to 2023 election. I think there are some people who thought democracy is not good enough for them. So they want to devise their own means of belonging to this entity called Nigeria. And that if they don't have their wish, so let Nigeria go to pieces. I mean, is, is that anything that constitution allows or constitution encourages? So there are 
absolutely outside the realm of the Constitution. And they are just rebels, they are just uh, uh, arsonists, they are totally, they are criminals in short. So what, what, uh, what are we going to consider to even give them a chance to say, look, uh, come and say your wish and let Nigerians bow and tremble before them and say, okay, we'll grant you your wish. Those uh, insurgents in the southeast, they are all claiming that they want their own country called Biafra, right? And if that is the case, is that by killing people that they will get their country? They have tried it before. Do they want us to go back to the same route? I don't think so. But if they do, if that's what they choose, has Nigeria got any choice? Will, they, will we just allow them and bow and say, yes, we will grant you your wish by killing people? No. Nigerian government has to stand up and fight them and bring them to order. So, I mean, what, makes, what gives you the um, feeling that what is happening, the killings that we're seeing are about 2023, could you uh, throw some more light, shed light on what you just said, the pointers, what are those things that gives you that feeling? Or do you have any research that is linked to that? Shed more light on that. No, you see, <laughs> um, before this time, when they murder and they say there must be uh, presidency, say, you know, we have to get together with the dialogue and that presidency has to be zoned. Is that democracy? Is that what the Constitution says? Why should presidency be zoned? Let it be for each political party to do whatever they wish in accordance with their own constitution. If they want to zone presidency to anywhere, let them do that and let Nigerians judge. When they feel they are candidates, Nigerians will judge. I thought the, game, the question of democracy is a game of numbers. When uh, elections take place, the majority wins. The minority have to give up if they are being constitutional, if they are being uh, abiding by the law. But if some people say either we get the presidency or the country go to pieces, then obviously everything was targeted towards the election. So, uh, because I, I asked earlier if you have, uh, if you could tell us if there is anything, evidence to show that all of these violence and killings are about 2023 elections. Do you have any? Well, look, I don't have to come up with a police report or record or intelligence report or record, but we have lived in this country and I have seen several elections from the one in 1960, which was conducted actually in 59. But you never see this kind of thing. And each time an election is approaching, within two years, you find one, sort, one form of violence or the other. If you have not forgotten, the trouble that brought the first coup was started from the Western region. When there was trouble all over Lagos and neighboring states of Lagos, there were no states then, but it was the Western region. And that culminated into the uh, coup of 1966. That was after the first election. So it's uh, on record that these things have been recurring each time the uh, election is approaching. So this cannot be different. See the kind of anger and rage each time they come out, each and every one of them, they come out to remind us about the genocide they committed against us during the war. Each time they talk, they come to remind us about the genocide they committed against us during the war. This is something they never want to talk about. They want to address. They don't want to address it. They don't want to give people their rights. Everything they have promised after the civil war, no victory, no vanquish, it's all a joke. The war has not ended. The war is still going on since 1967 up to date. The Fulanese are still fighting war against the Biafrans. 
if you think that the Biafra war ended, it never ended. It continues till date. The only thing that can end Biafra war is the disintegration of Nigeria. When Nigeria, Nigerians go their separate ways, each indigenous people go their separate ways and have their own region. Then, and only then will the Biafra war end. It has not ended. The war has been going on since 1967 till date and it's still going on. Fulanese are still fighting. Fighting vigorously in all angles. You see the way they are destroying the businesses of the South. See the way they are destroying the businesses of the South. Every business in the South is being rendered busy. Fire break, fire outbreak in all markets in the southern part of Nigeria. All markets in that contraption called Nigeria is being set on fire for no just cause. No reason for it. They don't, they have never been a time they come and tell us what is the cause of the fire. Nobody speaks about it. Nobody's making inquiry. Nobody's making any plan to protect the market and make sure it doesn't happen again. Every now and again, you continue to hear markets being set on fire. This is an economic attack against the South. Who are the people doing the business? The Southerners, the Igbos and the Yorubas, they are the people doing the business. Only few of the, of the Northerners are in the business. Few of them. And the place that has been dominated by the Southern part is the place that has been set on fire. In all the markets across the country, they are being set on fire. If they don't set the market on fire, you hear about the trailer, tra trailer, trailer tankers are falling down and people dying. They are taking the oil every time to the north. They have a, a, a reservoir in the north, Kaduna. We have not heard about any trailer, uh, trailer exploding in the north. We have not heard about any trailer exploding on the road or falling on the road to explode. It is only in the southern part of Nigeria. All these things are attack. They are attack. They are all planned. So, you should wake up. If you are still sleeping, wake up wherever you are. Wake up. Wake up, wake up and do the needful. Add your own voice. Add your own voice and prepare yourself for what is coming. We are asking for a peaceful breakup. Nobody is asking for war. But if they choose a different way otherwise, we have no choice than to match with them the same equal measure that they give to us. Thank you so much for watching wherever you're watching from. If you are not subscribed to my channel, kindly subscribe to my channel. Click the notification bell so that you're notified each time I upload a video. Join me all the time and remember this. Bye bye. See you again on the next video.